Hello, livestock friends, and welcome to this edition of Before the Bid. This is a podcast dedicated to the livestock sales industry where we go behind the scenes of the operation and speak straight to the sellers. We discuss topics about the important aspects of their operation, location, the people behind the prep work, and talk about some of the animals that will be offered to you, the prospective buyers. Hopefully, you've got your sale catalog close by. You might have to go look through that pile on your desk. But if not, then you're probably like me and driving down the road or busy with chores around the farm. And that's okay too. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you enjoy this segment of Before the Bid. I'm your host, Andy Howe. Welcome, Livestock friends, to this edition of Before the Bid. And on this podcast, I have a guy from Kansas, and we go out to Dover, Kansas, and we're going to talk a bull sale. We're going to talk Angus and Simmental bulls. And uh, the guy that I'm talking to tonight, uh, really getting to know him uh, pretty well here through some phone conversations. And, and man, this is a this is a really good guy that, that I have on here. And he works with live auctions. So uh, if you're watching some of those Western sales with live auctions, he is likely behind some of the computer things and, and the videos that are going on. And we are going to go to Sunflower Genetics uh, again at Dover, Kansas. And I'm going to be talking with Ben Gleason. And they are having a Angus and Simmental bull sale that is coming up here on March 19th. And so uh, we want to invite you to look into that. And we're going to talk about some bulls. We're going to talk about some history of Sunflower Genetics. And uh, have some fun here on this podcast with Mr. Ben Gleason. And uh, Ben, out there in Kansas, and, and you guys have been kind of in the frozen tundra here the last couple of weeks. And uh, you you getting things warmed up and getting things dried out and, and ready for this bull sale. Yeah, you know, we lived in the, yeah, like you said, frozen tundra for about two weeks, but, mm -hmm. you know, it was 80 degrees here today. Uh -huh. So, oh, wow. Thanks. Things thaw out pretty quick when it's 80 degrees and the wind was blowing 35 mile an hour all day. So right. we're, we're gearing up. It's busy, busy, busy all day, every day around here. Gets just cleaning stuff, mowing, getting everything ready to go for next week. So, right. Yeah, and, and you guys, uh, uh, we'll, we'll get into a little bit of the history here, but you guys have, uh, you guys got the cattle, you guys have some some pigs, you guys have some sheep, uh, kind of diverse around, and then you've got a little bit of crop ground and hay ground as well. Yeah, yeah, um, all those things keep us uh, extremely busy, except especially this time of year, you know, pig sale season's right here already. I mean, we've already started selling, uh, sold our older set of pigs here the last several weeks and brother has sheep and we'll he'll start selling those anytime and then of course bull sale and calving and you know everything else it's just busy 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 and then when when everything else gets to going why you get to say hey uh, guys i got a sale i gotta go cover with live auctions yeah thankfully <laughs> everybody around here is fairly understandable about that and uh they let me go do what i enjoy to do and that's go work for other people and try to help them and um yeah everybody around here is pretty understanding about that for the most part other than when the weather's not good so right well, what's your favorite part about that uh about doing the live auctions honestly just seeing so many cattle mm -hmm. um just going to seeing how every other people's programs operate you know how they how they kind of do things you know see what works at sales what doesn't work um just get a really good grasp and then the people i just i love working with the people i mean i've met tons and tons of great great friends and people around there um doing those sales and i get to see a lot of country too and that's mm -hmm. that's really nice as well i mean we don't get the vacation much around here but i always kind of call my sales that i get to travel for kind of my vacation for a while but no i really enjoy just seeing just you know cattle and stuff and um honestly i work in a lot of breeds that we actually have here and um, it's kind of nice to get to see multiple sire groups at different places and just see how how bulls are working and you know with other people and um, definitely helps in our breeding decisions when it comes down to making those in the fall and in the spring so right i, I was going to ask that how much how much of that information do you guys bring back and and your use on on your own operation a ton of it especially 
I actually do a lot of Angus sales. Uh-huh. Um, and kind of my my favorite breed around here is Angus. And I I grew up showing Angus. My siblings, uh, they showed Simitals. So dad would take them to go show at the Simital shows because, like, the Kansas shows, uh, the pre Kansas Angus preview show and the Kansas Simital uh, state show were all on the same weekend. Oh, wow. So dad would take all my, my other siblings, which I, I've got four other siblings, and uh, they'd go and show Simitals, and then I, me and Mom, we'd go down and we'd show Angus, and then we'd all come back home Sunday night and see how everybody did. So. Right. Oh, that that sounds great. And, and that that kind of lead us into to some of the history here of, of Sunflower Genetics, and and it, it was uh, one... One had Simmentals and one had Angus, and and then you guys kind of kind of brought those together, or, or they kind of brought those together, uh, I guess. So if you would, yeah, if you would, Ben, take us back a little bit and, and tell us about the history of sunflower genetics. Yeah, so uh, back when Dad was in, oh, I think he was in junior high, maybe early in his high school, uh, back in the seventies, he uh, he actually started weighing would be my grandpa's calves so his dad um which uh started weighing all of his calves and stuff and they were they were not good uh weights wise i mean they he weighed them at weaning and they were sub 400 pound weaning weights and dad was very disappointed in that thought they should be a lot bigger so um him and grandpa went and bought a couple simmental bulls and started using them and the weights just shot right up so dad kind of got really enthused with simmentals right off the bat there um once he kind of figured out what they were missing um and then of course typical every kid wants to race show cattle and so he kind of dabbled in some of that stuff and um used a few bulls they went and bought a they went and bought i don't know if it was a main bull or evil or whatever it was but weights just calves weren't very good i mean they were little dink things that not bashing the breeds at all because i think right. there's good cattle in every breed but right you know at that time those those cattle weren't work they did not work here and so they went back to the simitals and just uh started breeding more simitals and uh dad actually bought his first uh simital females in 1980 and uh, sold his first set of bulls in 1981. Mm -hmm. um, oh, wow. And basically, he's been selling, we've been selling bulls ever since. But um, mom and dad met at K State, which we're all proud graduates of. You know, it's 40 miles away, so it's close to right. home and it's a great university. And um, honestly, that's, that's how I ended up with my job at live auctions was because of K State. Mm -hmm. um, I had taken a uh, sales class the bull sale class um i don't know what they exactly call it but i was in that class and that's when i met brad farmeyer and uh basically i started started following him around a few sales and then i started doing them myself mm -hmm. so but that that's how i got started with that but yeah so mom and dad they met at k-state mom came from a, a background in uh landscape uh, and horticulture um, her family owns a nursery um, still owns a nursery um, in wichita wichita kansas that is mm -hmm. and uh, of course dad comes from a farm background um, grand my grandpa sold perina feed for a long 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 time and uh, always had cows around and everything like that and um, so anyway so dad had simmental cows and mom actually grew up showing angus cattle um, and had a small herd of Angus cows um, back at home, and they met, and they got married, and basically, uh, we've got a slogan now that says, the perfect blend of genetics, and basically, when they got married, that perfect blend was made, and, you know, the Simitals and the Angus, we've been, we've been making Sim Angus cattle for over 35 years, um, basically, since mom and dad got married, and, you know, we were making Sim Angus cattle before it was ever even popular. Right, um, and they were very well received early on, and still are. And mom and dad had that foresight to start mating those together, and it's been it's been a great thing ever since. And um, pretty well, I mean, like I said, Grandpa sold feed most of his life, and 
you know, Grandpa played a huge role in in my life and my dad's life. Obviously, um, he laid the principles basically for how we run things around here and um, and how we make a lot of our breeding decisions. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he uh, he was a salesman. Mm-hmm. He had three basic principles: what the customer wants and what the customer needs. Mm-hmm. Is and you know the customer is always right. So you always want to make a product that the customer wants and the customer needs. Mm-hmm. You always want to make dependable genetics that have no surprises. Mm-hmm. And basically, you know, like we really try to focus on making. You know, we're raising simitols. You know, back long time ago, simitols were, you know, red and white, right? Yellow and white and stuff. And you know, so Dad actually enjoyed the black cattle more mm-hmm. so he started ma- like he started making black scimitols well now we're making a lot we're making all black scimitols granted there is one red scimitol bull in the sale mm-hmm. but we try to make them all homo black homozygous black homozygous pulled just so when a customer comes in they buy a bull that they want you know they want their calves to be black they want them to be pulled and they want them to grow right you take a homozygous black and homozygous pulled bull to a bunch of cows, you're probably going to get a bunch of black pulled calves. Right. Uh, and then you have to stand behind them 100%. I mean, you got to believe in what you're doing and you got to stand behind them. So those are the basically the three, the three rules that Grandpa laid out for Dad early on and said, you know, if you want to do it, you got to do it this way. So. Mm-hmm. And and why why there's been success for for 25 years? This is this is a 25th annual uh, sunflower genetics production sale. Yep, this is this will be the 25th actual sale we've had. Obviously, we had some private treaty sales before then. You know, like I said earlier, Dad sold his first bulls in 1981. Mm-hmm. So we're I don't know how many years that's a lot of years. Right. Uh, forty. I mean, that's forty right. years. Forty years. Yeah. Yeah. So a long a long time. Right. And if you would, just uh, hit on real quick, uh, you know, it, it's not just you around there. Uh, they've raised, what, you and you and four others that, that they've raised and uh, or, or still almost. They got one that's just about got him raised, I think, don't they? <laughs> yeah, I'd say he's pretty well raised. I mean, he's he's been out of, out of the house for a while. And, he, you know, he went to, he took the same route I did. We both, him and... Uh, my younger brother Sam and I both went to uh, Butler Community College. We all, honestly, we've all judged. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've all judged livestock. Um, but him and I both went to Butler and then went to K State. And he's going to graduate hopefully in May. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, he's probably one of the smarter ones of us all, and uh, so he's going to be fine. But um, yep, that's uh, Sam's the youngest. Um, my oldest brother, Jake and I both have, uh, have show pigs together and he's got the sheep. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, he went to Coffeeville community college and judged under Brian Anderson, mm-hmm. um, and went to K state and then got his master's at Virginia tech and mm-hmm. coached the livestock judging team there. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a sister that is 16 months older than me. She went to Coffeeville and Fort Scott for community college judge there both places and then went to k-state and actually has a degree in speech pathology but is printing cattle uh sale bull sale catalogs for uh her current occupation Mm -hmm. so and she's going to get married here in july so we're pretty excited about pretty excited about that Mm -hmm. her fiance pat arkfield the breeds hogs in nebraska and um he's an assistant judging coach at hutchison community college now and I guess you can say we we like Pat. He's he's all right, mm-hmm. but um, I'm the middle child. Like I said, went to Butler, uh, judged judged at Butler, and then went to K State. Um, and then I've uh, younger brother Joe, who has got married, and in the back of the catalog, the wedding photo in there is from their wedding. Uh, he married Morgan. Uh, they live in Perry, Kansas, and. Um, he comes out and helps every chance he gets, and she comes out and she, she's the freeze brander around here. I mean, she 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 enjoys freeze branding cattle. So, anyway, they got married this summer, um, and then of course I already touched on Sam. But yep, there's five of us total. Um, Mom and Dad survived raising five kids. <laughs> 
I'm sure they got a lot of gray hairs from it, but they, I'd say they did a pretty decent job on most of us, but. Right. And, and as you said, two of you are, two of you are back on the farm full time or, or basically full time. Yep. Jake and I are, uh, are here. Um, obviously I do do my stuff with live auctions, right. but Jake and I, Jake and I are both here. Jake handles all the, you know, the, like the catalog and stuff. That is his baby. I mean, he makes that thing and year after year. It's great. Mm-hmm. I mean, it looks, looks good. He handles all the advertising catalog. Mom runs all the book work um, and keeps us all in line and keeps us all fed, mm-hmm. um, which is extremely important. important and right. um, and yeah, and then I'm I'm here full basically full time. I mean, obviously I'm gone certain times of the year, but mm-hmm. I'm here full time with running or right alongside uh, mom and dad and my older brothers. So it's pretty great. Always wanted to come back and very thankful i'm able to i was able to come back think thankfully mom and dad laid a good enough foundation for for at least two of us to be back here right you said when when we were talking earlier that that you guys your operation used to be larger uh, and and now you've kind of cut back a bit on on cow numbers yeah i can't remember exactly when it was but we used to have a hired a hired hand Mm -hmm. um dad got tired of it of having you know, to tell somebody what to do and said he likes to tell them his kids what to do. But <laughs> yeah, at one point we were running probably close to 800 cows, mm-hmm. uh, mainly commercial cows, but we had uh, spring and fall cows. Um, and then we had quite a few commercial cows. Well, dad got tired of having, you know, having, uh, having a hired hand around. So um, at that point they uh, got rid of the commercial cows and downsized the registered cow herd and in that dispersed the fall cows um granted now we're going back to where we are trying to make more fall cows but Mm -hmm. um but yeah it's a totally family-run operation um we have one high school kid that helps us when he gets out of school and that's about it Mm -hmm. so and and just running just running angus and and simmentals yep and the cow herd is all uh, Angus and Simital, um, obviously the majority of the cow herd is Sim Angus is percentage, mm-hmm. but we're really focused on trying to make more purebred Simitals and uh, try to keep things a little more purebred now because it seems like you can turn around any corner and you can find a percentage Simital bull now. So right. we're trying to shift, shift, we're shifting gears in a couple different uh, a couple different aspects, just making more purebreds, trying to make them... Uh, transition things over to more fall cattle um, so we can sell older bulls and quite frankly the calving in the fall is a lot easier than calving like it was a couple weeks ago <laughs> right right and you told me you guys don't you guys don't put them in the barn you guys don't don't pamper them at all nope we uh we have one little calving shed that dad built a couple years ago that we have in for the heifers um and it's got three stalls in it and we have close to 70, 70 heifers every, um, almost every year and trying to run, you know, the cow herd is ran. I mean, we have the cows on, oh, it's about, a, it's, I think it's over about 100 acres of native grass and there is no barn there. Um, they do not go through a barn. We try to run our, we try to run our cow herd just like our customers run theirs. I mean, it's, we're not here to pamper them. I mean, they Dad always says survival of the fittest, mm-hmm. and of course the that cold spell the last couple of weeks ago, we had to do a lot of extra work, but thankfully we didn't lose any calves in that. Oh. Um, but we were pretty well round the clock. Somebody was going checking babies all the time, so mm-hmm. uh, a lot of extra leg work, but in the end, it's all worth it. You know, we'll have a we'll have quite a few short ears, uh, short eared bulls for next year's sale, but. You know, we didn't lose any, so mm-hmm. that's the that's the important part. We lost years, but we didn't lose lives. Right. Well, that's great. And where is where is Dover, Kansas? Give us give us a little reference point there. Um, so, our actual physical address is Maple Hill. Okay. The sale is in Dover. Okay. Um, but Dover is a little unincorporated town. It's literally a crossroads. I mean, there is an intersection. And there's houses to the north, houses to the south, east and 
that's about it. I mean, there's there's not. It's an unincorporated town. It's got a little. It's got a really nice cafe in it that is great to eat at. Um, and then it's got a little tractor shop and a post office, and that's about it in Dover. Mm-hmm. Where we live is right on the eastern edge of the Flint Hills, um, so prime prime cattle country. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is there's literally more cows in Obunsee County than people. Um, and we're and then we're also just on the western edge where we can actually we have uh, we've uh, planted a lot of fescue. Um, and so we're kind of we we're able to we're able to graze the cow herd almost twelve months out of the year. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome! So we kind of limit our feed source that way, and kind of can run cows a little a little bit cheaper. But we're also we send a lot of bulls into Missouri and Arkansas, um, and so those guys, you know, they're they're running on cool season grasses, and you know, for us to be able to develop our cows and run our cows and develop cattle on fescue, we're you know. We can not completely simulate that same environment, but we can right. be really close to it, um, which really has been really nice. You know, let you know, kind of keeps our focus in mind of where we're sending our bulls to. Mm-hmm. Um, so that definitely helps. But yeah, no, it's great cow country to the west, and really fortunate for where we live at. I mean, there's there's a lot of cattle around here, mm-hmm. and. Uh, and you know the native prairies is probably one of the, in my opinion, one of the greatest things in the world. I mean, you drive through Kansas in April and you see all the fires and stuff burning the grass off. You know, there's a lot of people that probably driving by wondering why the heck we're doing it. But honestly, it's it's to kind of give that real that jump start back to that grass and um, kind of keep the trees out of it. You know, we're not that we don't like trees around here, but cows don't eat trees. And right. So we burn off pastures every April, like every other rancher in Kansas does. And um, honestly, it's one of my favorite times of the year. I'm kind of a pyro, um, <laughs> but it's uh, it's important to the ecosystem. I mean, it's really good for stuff. Um, the grass is better when you burn it. Mm-hmm. Um, we're in a great little area for right. that type of thing, and we're not far from far from civilization either. So if we, you know, if we need something, you know, Topeka's you know, literally anywhere in Topeka is almost just 20 miles and you know, we're three miles off of I-70. So access to get anywhere we need to go is really easy. And right. so. Oh, that's, that's good. A neat, neat spot there and a uh, uh, great country. I've been out through there and uh, great, great country out in there. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, like I said, I drive a lot of miles and I enjoy home better than any other place I've ever been. So. That's great. Well, you guys have been at this been at this uh, cattle thing a long time. You've had you've had twenty five uh, twenty five bull sales and 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 females in those sales as well. Can you tell us uh, some of the success stories that you guys have had uh, from from some of the cattle that have left there, uh, or or even cattle that have been there uh, at your place? Just some of some of those stories about successful animals. Yeah, I mean, you know, here a couple of years ago, we said we sold a set of Flush Brothers. They were cowboy cut sons out of a top grade donor cow that we call B01, which she is in the pedigree of a lot of a lot of the bulls. I mean, that she's been very popular, and she's she's pretty well close to the model cow in my opinion. I mean, perfect feet, great udder, um, good looking, just a really all around good cow. Um, but she's raised several bulls that have been, they've been very, in my opinion, very popular. Um, the lot cowboy logic is one of them. Um, that's a, he's, he's the bald face brother, um, that Hawkins Simitals or Hawkins cattle company and Johnson Simitals bought in Minnesota. Um, unfortunately he's recently deceased. Um, so semen is going to become very limited on him, but uh, those calves just continue to just just amaze us. I mean, you can use that bull on anything, and I swear he'd work. Um, mm-hmm. But they bought him, and then we sold uh, another flush brother that year uh, called the Judge. And uh, Willie Morris and Iowa bought him, and they I know they've sold a bunch of semen on that bull. Um, and those cattle have been really nice. He works really well on Angus cattle here. That same cow has raised also. A uh, new bull that worked 
we're uh, we're using fairly hard around here. We call him Chairman, um, and he's an executive order son. He'd have been our high seller in lot one in last year's sale. That uh, hybrid Simitals in Madison, Kansas, bought half interest in um, Hal Luthi down there, and honestly, we got we got a bunch of calves on the ground out of him right now, and I'm pumped about those things. That is that's been that bull. He I. I really like that bull when we sold him, and he's the kind of bull I want to make all the time. I mean, just good feet, good looking, not big bodied, but got enough bodied, and mm -hmm. just real. I mean, just tons of sh true muscle shape and power and stuff. So, um, really like that bull, and that's probably the three main bulls that we've really been pushing um, here recently. We're have we're very heavily influenced in the cowboy cut um, sire group. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, we used him very hard. Um, the cattle just work around here. Um, so we've actually got another son had a cowboy cut um, that we, we call him McClintock around here, but somebody didn't change his registration name. And uh, But he is D6101. He, that's one of the best bulls I think we've ever used on Angus cows. I mean, that he makes a moderate, deep bodied, big, big rib. I mean, really sound, uh, just good cattle. And he worked, like I said, he works great on Angus cattle, um, Angus females. So really pleased with them. And they're scattered throughout the sale cattle, uh, throughout the sale this year. And we've got quite a few heifers we're selling out of that bull. And I mean, uh, there's a heifer later on I think I'm going to touch on that's really, really good out of him. So, Okay. Yeah, getting those out there for the, for the customers uh, to be successful. Uh, is, is honestly more important than, than you guys having them right there to be successful, right? Yeah, I mean, honestly, like like that cowboy logic bull. I just like to touch on him. I mean, he's that. Like I said, that bull uh, he works in so many different ways. I mean, I know we talked about this last time we talked, but you know, we're we're here. We're making. I mean, yeah, we've got cattle that have really good numbers, but that's not our sole criteria i mean we're i mean we're focused a lot on you know trying to dad calls them the trying to just cover the cowboy traits is like dad calls them mm -hmm. you know keeping them keeping their feet and legs right keeping you know that utter and maternal ability on those cows and fleshing ability and just you know how those cattle maintain and phenotype and stuff i mean we're we pay attention to numbers but that's not the sole criteria around here and there's a lot of breeders that it's easy to look at numbers but we're not doing that i mean we're we're trying to make them good first but we also don't want to lose track of what's what is on you know what their performance is i mean the performance does translate to the next generation mm -hmm. you can see you see it everywhere i mean it, it does make a difference but that's not our sole criteria. I mean, you can look at Cowboy Logic, that bull number, EPD-wise, his EPD profile is just, in my opinion, unreal. Mm -hmm. But that bull sires, that phenotype, that foot quality, um, just that, I mean, just everything, those mater that maternal instinct, those cows. I mean, we're calving out the first daughters. Um, we calved out the first daughters last year. Mm -hmm. But those cattle, they're just, they're good cattle. I mean, they're just they're just good cattle. Um, so that's a bull. Really unfortunate that that bull I, died too young, um, and he is he is recently deceased, like very recent. Mm -hmm. But that's a bull that does a lot of good. There is semen available on that bull still. Um, I don't know how long it's going to last. I don't know how much is on on hand. Uh, he's he's been collected at six oh five sires. There in South Dakota, uh, that that bull's done a whale a uh, whale of a good job, mm -hmm. and hopefully there's a son one day that can that'll do as much as him. But we're fairly early on in his calf crops and mm -hmm. just trying to figure out what what the next one's gonna be. But that logic bull has done a done a good job, really good job. Um, the judge has done a really good job throughout the nation. Uh, he, I think he's been used in probably almost every situation, and that's another bull that. Pro EPD profile is really really good, mm -hmm. but phenotype is there also. So mm -hmm. those those two bulls prove that you can you can do both. 
Right. It, it can't. I mean, I'm not saying they're perfect either way, but you can you can do them both. Right. I mean, you can you can have the numbers and you can have the phenotype all in one. I mean, you're not probably going to go out and win a show with one of them, but if you like looking at your cows, your right. cow herd. I mean, those those bulls are going to work. Right. So. Right. And I think the chairman bull is going to be something. Um, I think the daughters are going to be really good, um, and I think the bulls are going to be really good. So, okay. anyway, yeah. long enough some rant on that deal. But. No, and that's fine. Yeah, we're good. We're good because because we're going to talk about some sons uh, out of most of those guys here in in just a little bit. Uh, and and again, we we do want to let everybody know the the bull sale. You do have the uh, sunflower genetics bull sale that is coming up on March nineteenth, and so it is at uh, Dover, Kansas. And so we want to invite everybody out to that. It is going to be at 1 o'clock p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. And you guys have, before we get into talking about these bulls, you guys have some special things that you do for customers. And and one of them, I've looked through a lot of sale catalogs. I've looked through a lot of bull sales and, and different things. And not that I'm an expert on them by any means, but, but I've seen some things that you guys have a guarantee that just blows me away. Yeah, the, the four-year guarantee, that's, honestly, Dad was doing it a long time ago, and do, nobody was doing it. Mm -hmm. And still, there's still, there is a few guys now that have started to do it as well, but Dad's been doing it for a long time. I mean, he, he, he believes in what we're doing and what we're selling. I mean, he 100% stands behind him. I mean, that was one of those things, one of those basic rules that Grandpa laid out there early on, you know, you got to stand behind your product. And that four-year guarantee, you know, it covers feet and legs and fertility mm -hmm. are, the, are, the, are the two main things. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it doesn't get used that much. I mean, we develop our bulls for, for them to go out and hopefully breed cows for a long time. And, you know, hopefully you don't have to worry about it. But there are outside, you know, there are those times where things happen. I mean, that four-year guarantee, I mean, it, it covers... Like I said, it covers feet and legs, it covers fertility, and basically how that deal works is every year it depreciates 25% of what the bull cost originally, mm -hmm. minus salvage value also. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, it's a, you know, it's not a, it's not a ploy. We're not, I mean, it's not there to, you know, to lure people in to try to buy stuff. I mean, it's literally there because things do happen. Mm-hmm. And we want to stand behind them 100%. Our phones are always available to, to talk. I mean, we're always available to talk, you know. Mm -hmm. If you got a problem, come to us. Don't tell your neighbor. Come to us. Right. And so the guarantee deal, yeah, I mean, it's not many people have it, um, especially for four years. You know, a lot of people are 90-day breeding season guarantee or one year or whatever. But, mm -hmm. you know, that, I mean, we stand behind these bulls 100%. And if you got a problem, call us. Right. I mean, we'll... We're glad to help you in any way we can. So, right. and you've got a delivery, uh, you've got a kind of a delivery deal that that you guys do for uh, some states right around you as well. Yep, yep. We'll deliver. You know, um, states surrounding us: Nebraska, Missouri, Arkansas. You know, Arkansas really doesn't touch Kansas, but we will deliver to Arkansas for free. Dad and dad and mom, that's their that's their vacation time. I talked about vacation earlier with me going to sales, but that's mom and dad's mm -hmm. basically vacation time. I mean, he loves to do it. Uh -huh. uh, he, that is, dad absolutely loves delivering cattle. So, yeah, I mean, it's free delivery to uh, most of the surrounding states around us, and we'll get them to you as, as in a timely fashion. But but they they enjoy doing it. So yeah. so. And then you guys do sell some heifers in the sale as well, and you guys have a, a heifer program that, that you offer. Yep. So we'll, uh, every heifer, you can, it's all up to the buyer, but you can do an exclusive bred heifer option on that female. Basically, you can, we'll, uh, you'll buy the heifer, um, and we will breed her like she's one of our own, um, unless you want to breed her to something different. We you know that semen we we need that semen when we breed them but um and that's your responsibility to get the semen and whatnot unless we can unless we can easily access it right but we will breed that heifer ai them um right along with ours 
and we will run them in the pasture um, with a cleanup bowl, just like we do ours. And then we will make sure those cow, those heifers are, are bred before they leave the place. And then you can come pick them up uh, by October 1st. And it costs $400 to do it, but you buy a heifer for, let's say, $1,500, you pay an extra $400 for it to be a bread. And, mm-hmm. you know, you just bought a bread heifer for 1900 bucks, which pretty pretty <laughs> economical in my opinion. Right, right. That is pretty economical. Uh, you are right. Yeah. Let's get into these bulls, but first, but one, real quick before we do that, they can find this catalog. If they don't have a catalog in hand, they can find this catalog on sunflowergenetics.com. Yep. Uh, that's exactly where I went. You guys have so much info on there. You guys have info, of course, for the bulls. You've got videos for the bulls. You've got pictures of the bulls. Uh, they can they can see a whole lot of things here on sunflowergenetics.com. Yeah, and I failed to mention that is also Jake. Jake handles our website, and he does a really nice job. And yes. our, our, uh, we actually just that is a the, the website we've got now. Um, he just redid it this spring, and I think it looks awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, so Very. full of information. The history needs updated, but it's full of information. So right. yeah, and also on on some flower genetics uh, on Facebook as well. We try to stay up to date on that. But you know, sometimes we get a little behind. So, right. well, Ben, let's let's go through some of these some of these bulls that that you want to highlight. I mean, we'll just start basically like way we're going to sell them catalog order. Mm-hmm. Um, we will pull up about ten bulls early on in the sale to sell. Um, just kind of highlight some of the bulls early on, but um, we'll just go right down through the catalog here and start with lot one. You know, he's a Cowboy Logic son. Uh, obviously, you guys heard my spiel on Cowboy Logic, mm-hmm. uh, how much I believe in that bull. But um, the cow family behind Lot 1 is just unreal. I mean, he's an ET bull. He's an embryo bull, embryo transfer bull out of uh, out of an old 16-year, she'd be 16 this year. Um, we started flushing her when she was about uh, 10 or 12 years old. Um, so she... She went through the ropes before we decided to flush her. I mean, she she's a purebred Angus cow. She's a she's an old lemon news line. Mm-hmm. She went through the ringer, but we she had an Angus camp every year. She bred back, bred back to AI every year. Um, I don't know exactly her calving interval, mm-hmm. but I'd imagine it was pretty tight. Mm-hmm. And you'll notice as you go through the catalog, like that cow, that cow and that cow family is scattered i mean they're they're everywhere um that cow has left her left her print on everything and the daughters just keep doing a really 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 nice job but anyway lot one you know he's a cowboy logic um this fall um we were going through stuff trying to figure out what we were going to ai her heifers to struggled really did i mean we you know we're we're a little different than a lot of the simitol breeders now uh, I guess a little bit. Um, we're not driving towards the numbers, mm-hmm. and we're not driving towards the show ring. Mm-hmm. So we're in that we're in that middle ground where we're trying to make cattle that are good phenotype and have good performance data as well. Mm-hmm. So finding bulls that fit in that criteria really hard to do. Right. So anyway, we were searching, trying to find a bull to use um, this fall a little bit, just trying to. Uh, just trying to outsource a little bit and just couldn't find them. So dad and I were walking through the fall bulls this fall, you know, the yearlings, as when they were yearlings, just walking through them. And he said, well, what about, what about that bull? What about this logic son? He's like, hmm, never thought of it. Not opposed to it. Let's do it. And uh, we call him good news. Mm-hmm. You know, last fall, you know, a lot of stuff in the, in the media and then the news and stuff. And, just wanted something refreshing, and so we, we called him good news and uh, took him up to Capsu. He jumped and froze semen his first collection, oh, wow. and we bred heifers to him this, this fall. So mm-hmm. uh, his first kids will actually hit the ground this, this coming fall, and uh, pretty excited about it. Just that cow family, you know, we're combining, honestly, we're combining probably two of the most prominent cow families in our herd. I mean, the 
the princess, cow family, and the queens. I mean, we're we're combining those two in this one bowl, and that's that's pretty exciting, pretty intriguing to do, and I'm uh, really excited to get the calves out of that bowl. But, you know, phenotypically, that bull is just made really, really nice. You know, good feet, sound. Not going to blow you away from a power standpoint, probably, but he's got plenty of power and muscle. I really like that bull. I'm definitely genetically very, very, uh, very excited about that one. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got more semen here uh, in the tank, so I probably, you know, I don't, I don't know what dad wants to do, but um, probably can either sell him with his semen or we'll just keep his semen and we'll breed cows to him still mm-hmm. this spring. So mm-hmm. really like that bull. Um, he's lot one. Uh, Blaze face bull to boot. So homo black, homo pulled. So something that we really strive for. And really like that bull a lot. Check out his video. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you may not be impressed by his picture, check out the video. Yeah, and honestly, that picture was taken early in December. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's matured a lot since then. Uh, all these, all these fall bulls that we shot, we we changed up our picture pin at the request of our photographer. Mm-hmm. I'm glad we did because it it made a big it made a big difference. And unfortunately, she didn't get to use our new picture pin much. Um, with we tried to start picturing all the rest of the bulls early in this cold spell and. We shot five bulls, and yeah, it was not not gonna happen. It got it was it was. I, I like to think I'm pretty tough, but that was cold. Right. And so, and uh, so yeah. So actually, I ended up shooting the rest of them. But we use uh, Morgan Meisenheimer to shoot all of our pictures every year. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's been doing it for several years and does an awesome job. Mm-hmm. So really, really like the work that Morgan does, but. Um, so yeah, these bulls were shot early in December. Mm-hmm. Um, these fall, these these fall bulls with the bale backgrounds, but mm-hmm. um, but yeah, that bull has changed a lot since his picture, and uh, yeah, his video, I think his video really represents him pretty well. I really like that bull a lot. Mm-hmm. I guess we can just jump over to lot two, kind of a new cow family here, the beauties. Um, that's a we bought the old uh, beauty one twenty six X cow from Welsh's there. Uh, in Kentucky several years ago um, and been really, really pleased with those. Uh, That bull, Lot 2, is out of a lookout daughter of hers. That one was a great cow. I mean, just stoutness, bone, just something we didn't have. I mean, she had the muscle and the power uh, that we don't normally have in our in our cows. Um, We try to, I mean, our cows are really maternal driven. Mm -hmm. Um, So a little bit different for us uh from a phenotypic standpoint and that lot two bull is he's darn nice i mean kind of just encompasses everything that we strive for i mean foot quality muscle and look and performance wise pretty pretty solid across the board i mean he's not going to jump out number wise actually on from an epd standpoint but pretty good growth really like that bull i honestly this fall bull set is really really deep Mm -hmm. um really really happy with our fall bulls this year um and we'll have you know like i said earlier we're going to keep building on this fall deal just to try to make them a little older for our customers and you know trying to satisfy their needs but really like that bull a lot Mm -hmm. um and like yeah he's his videos on the website everybody's videos up so right right the video guy finally got them all done After, I am the video after guy. everybody else's, probably after everybody else's. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so, yeah, but I know, I know how that goes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just keep moving on here. You know, the I talked about that McClintock bull that you know D sixty one hundred one. Obviously, his name in the catalogs Cowboy Cut D sixty one hundred one. But uh, you know, you move on to those. Like I said earlier, that bull works awesome on Angus cows. And lot three and four, are both out of Angus cows. Um, lot three, uh, that bull is that bull's that that bull's a man. I mean, he is big bodied and really stout, good looking. Uh, really like that bull a lot. And he's out of a sixteen year old cow mm-hmm. um, that just year after year just got the job done. I mean, just always got the job done and. You know, so longevity's in the pedigree, and you'll kind of notice that as we go through the catalog. I mean, 
longevity's there on these bulls. I mean, just the cow families and stuff, and a lot of the cows these bulls are out of are, you know, they're older. I mean, those cows are, they've got some age on them, and lot three's no different. I mean, he's out of a 16, she'd be 16 this year, and mm-hmm. um, this is actually her last calf she had. And, um, boy, he's a good one. Mm-hmm. She 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 left off with a bang. So right. um, I think his video is really impressive, yes. and he's he is more impressive in person. I mean, that that thing's got muscle and power and style to beat. So really like that bull a bunch. And the D sixty one hundred ones they're spread out throughout this entire catalog. But uh, like I said, half blood bulls. That thing is. They're, they're, those things are really nice, mm-hmm. but uh, selling. You know, we've got fourteen Simital Sim Angus bulls that we're selling fall uh, in the fall group. Um, there's good bulls all the way through those things. And then you kind of flip through and you get to the you get to a pair of Logic bulls out of a uh, pay weight cow. That um, honestly, those bulls, uh, those two lead off Logic bulls out of that pay weight cow. My cousin Chase actually raised those. Mm-hmm. They're two ET full brothers. Boy, they came off the trailer there this fall, and when like when that bought fifteen bull came off the trailer, I mean jaws dropped. Mm-hmm. I mean that. I mean it's you know his his footnote starts out man amongst boys, and we're not talking about the clubby bull, <laughs> right? Um, I mean this guy is a man amongst boys. I mean he is so stout, so big bellied, and just covers all the bases from a phenotypic standpoint i mean he is he is the performance leader in the pen i mean he he stands out uh that bull is honestly i wish he was a purebred because i think that bull would have a lot of value down the road but even as a half blood i think that bull's got a ton of value and he's yeah i mean just another lot i mean he's another logic i mean just another highlight of where logic works i mean that bull just works in a lot of places and Lot 15 is, uh, he's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, that is, that's a cowboy bull. I mean, that is a literally, like I said, man amongst boys. That is, he's stout, mm-hmm. real stout mm-hmm. and extremely impressive. Yeah. And then we jump over a bit there. We jump to the lot 24 bull. Yep. Yeah. Wichita son out of a really good young United cow. Um, I actually just saw her running around in the pasture tonight, and I was like, "Gosh, dang, what's that cow?" And it was it was that bull's mother. Like, gosh, she looked she looked darn good. Um, really phenotypically, I really like that bull a bunch. Just made really really nice, and uh, uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny today. I was just driving by, uh, I was heading down to check the check heifers this evening, and. There was a bull standing at the bunk. I was like, God dang, that looks like an awful good bull. And that was the bull, lot 24. He was mm-hmm. sitting there at the bunk. And uh, just, I mean, made nice, powerful, stout. Um, a little more moderate framed. Not big, but not, li- I mean, not little. Mm-hmm. But not super big either. I mean, he's pretty moderate and really stout and attractive and uh, mm-hmm. good footed and yeah, I mean, his mother, like I said, I saw her tonight. I went over and checked cows tonight, too. And I, I saw her walking across the pasture. And I was like, gosh, dang, what's that cow? She looks awful good. And it was his mother. So mm-hmm. um, that shadow cow family is fairly new here. Like I said earlier, my brother went to Virginia Tech to get his master's. And uh, actually, uh, they raised the unit, the purebred unit there at Virginia Tech, raised the, grand, the grandmother of this bull. Um mm-hmm. So that shadow cow family is fairly youthful and young here. Um, goes back to the shadow cow family at Champion Hill. Mm-hmm. Um, so for you guys that follow the show, you follow the Angus show cattle. I'm sure Champion Hill is a name you definitely rec- recognize. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, the maternal quality in that cow family is really, really good. Um, you know, we we really focus on that here. I mean, mm-hmm. the cow the cow herd is what drives the bull sale, honestly. Right. The next bull we you talked about chairman. We got full brother yep. full brother to chairman in lot twenty five. Yeah, there's two full brothers to him in the sale. You know, I talked about chairman, you know, what what he's kinda like, you know, how much I like him and uh twenty five is really very similar built to what chairman is, probably not 
you know, Chairman, when we sold him, he was a fall, uh, 18-month-old bull when he sold him. Mm-hmm. 25 is a yearling bull, so a little bit, I, I don't want to say behind uh, from a maturity level because um, I'm comparing him to an 18-month-old bull. But honestly, those two two full brothers to Chairman, which they're both out of that BO1 donor, Cal, um, that I talked so highly of earlier. The quality is still there. The build is still there. Um, the mold is all right there. They're just a little little bit behind maturity-wise. But I think 25, uh, in his video, I think that bull has really came on here in the last two weeks. And, of course, I think 26 has also came on a lot here in the last couple of weeks. But, um, but, yeah, those two bulls are full sibs to chairman. Um, and I like that chairman bull a bunch. So, baldies, both of them. Um, about 25 is a full, full blown baldy. I mean, white, mm-hmm. white on both sides. So, uh, what else are the, what else are the Simmentals? There's a kind of a new little twist for us. Um, I guess we talked one of these purebred bulls, uh, lot 28, uh, is a bitten son. Um, so you guys probably don't know who bitten is. Jeff Springer in Iowa. My uh, Jake does puts together his bull sale catalog, mm-hmm. and he was going through Jeff's catalog and talking to Jeff, and he kept talking about this bitten bull, and pictures started coming in on those bitten cattle, and Jake really liked them and thought we should probably try. Him. You know, he's a Canadian bred bull. We don't have many of them. We'll have more next year, um, but we we've, we've got set. We've got a few females out of him um, that we kept. Um, in our replacement herd, but that's a good bull, just a little diff- little different pedigree from what we normally have. Definitely an out, an outcross from most of the cowboy cut stuff that, um, you know, like I said earlier, we're pretty heavy in that cowboy cut influence. Mm-hmm. This is a purebred bull that definitely uh, a little different pedigree for us. Probably could use a look. I mean, really stout. I don't want to say hairy, but he's hairy. Mm-hmm. Definitely and got a little white on his head. But yeah, really nice bull. Just kind of same mold as everything else. Just good feet and legs, big bodied, um, plenty stout. So mm-hmm. looks like a man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does. Be remiss if I didn't talk about the two-year-old. Mm-hmm. So kind of a neat little deal here. Um, like I talked about earlier on those two chairman sons. Uh, full sibs, the two chairman full sibs, but there's a lot 65 is a two-year-old bull that is a full brother, full brother in blood, to Cowboy Logic, the judge, and a young a bull we sold last year uh, called Cowboy Way. Mm-hmm. We didn't offer him last spring, and we have not offered him at all private tree. We uh, have a pretty decent private treaty sales um, in the fall. Mm-hmm. But we did not offer this bull up for private treaty. The intention the whole time was to sell this bull in this sale. Like I said, he's a full brother to the judge, Logic, Cowboy Way, um, and is a direct son of that BO1 donor cow. Of that flush, we've sold five full brothers, and they have averaged 15.5 mm-hmm. in the last few years. Wow. We don't have a picture of those bulls, of these two-year-olds. We should have. But just ran out of time. Kind of same thing with the heifers. Just ran out of time and didn't get them pictured like we should have. But that's a really nice bull. And definitely pedigree-wise, if you want to get in on something that has some predictability, I mean, that would be a way to go. So, mm-hmm. But I think that pretty well covers the scimitar world. Okay. Let's get in a little more my speed, the Angus bulls. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a little more my speed too. I like I said, I I like the Angus stuff. That's mm-hmm. Mom and I's deal. We we really like the Angus the Angus side of things around here. So kind of same type of deal. Just go right down the line. You know, lot sure. sixty seven bull. He's out of a bull we call Ramp It Up. We bought Ramp It Up from Galaxy Beef there in Missouri. Um, we own part of him with them. Um, that bull has done a really nice job and put a several females back into our herd and they're they're doing a really nice job as cows just utter quality is really good feet and legs are good just maternal abil- instincts are really really good on those cattle and you'll notice as you kind of look through his pedigree i mean he's 
she's out of a princess cow out of a mm-hmm. excuse me she is a banknote out of the print going back to that 551 donor mm-hmm. i used banknote several years ago kind of slid through when dad wasn't uh had a <laughs> that is 100 percent. honestly if i if dad would have been completely uh 100 percent, i probably wouldn't have been able to use the bull uh very happy i did just i think the maternal and inst- the maternal side of that uh, of the banknote daughters is really really good and I'm really happy that I just did. But, uh, but yeah, no, that's a ramp it up. Uh, going back to that, that uh, goes back to that 551 donor. Honestly, this bull, we should have pictured him earlier. Planned on it. Honestly, I ran out of time when we pictured our fall bulls early. Mm-hmm. But uh, this bull had just flat came on. I mean, I, I mean, like I, I see a lot of cattle in the spring. I see a lot of Angus bulls. It's uh. That bull would uh, top a lot of sales mm-hmm. in the Angus world, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, just so, just no holes. I mean, that bull, number wise, he's just a pretty. I mean, he's pretty decent, but phenotypically, that bull's got no holes. I mean, that bull is good-footed, sound, uh, plenty of body, plenty of shape, plenty of muscle. Uh, looks like a bull. Mm-hmm. Um, really, really like that bull a bunch, and. Got a cow family behind him that, you know, has stood the test of time here. Mm-hmm. I mean, the princess cow family has been here since mom and dad got married. Mm-hmm. Wow! So along, along with, along with the queens and the the queens and the princesses have all been here since they since they got married. So mm-hmm. those cows just keep getting it done. But right. yeah, that's lot sixty seven. Um, I think that bull's awfully good. Um, 68 is a comes from the same cow family different sire he's an 18 million so growth is kind of his strong suit uh that bull is big um that bull grew really we don't put raw dat i mean we don't put raw weights in the catalog because you know if you could you know you could be 1400 pounds but if you the rest of the group is you know 15 1600 pounds then mm-hmm. you're small technically mm-hmm. so we put ratios in um, it's explained on the same, kind of in the same spread as Lot 68's uh, in the catalog, the ratios versus raw weights. And, um, but that bull is big. I mean, he is, uh, he's a growth bull. Uh, big, long-bodied, big-framed, tons of growth, tons of power, and comes from the same same cow family as the lead-off Paul Angus bull. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just... A little different for us, mm-hmm. but and there's a, I mean the yearling fall, the yearling Angus bulls are really nice. We've got a, we've got a couple stunners that I really like from a phenotypic standpoint. I mean those, the stunner cattle are I I really like them. Um, I really like the daughters that we kept out of stunner. Mm-hmm. And then you'll notice the plus ones. Uh, that was a bull I saw at Benoit's when he sold. I was running live auctions for them. Uh, we were wa- I was walking through those bulls, and I saw I saw him, and I was like, God dang, that's a good bull. I told, called Dad. I said, I think we can try to buy him. He's like, Well, I don't know. I mean, what do you think he's gonna bring? I said, I don't know. And uh, anyway, he brings way more than my budget, mm-hmm. way more money. But thankfully, Brad Farmer, who I talked about earlier. Uh, from the live auctions deal, you know, he created live auctions. Mm-hmm. He was there and he bought plus one. Oh wow! So as soon as I got on the road, I called Brad and I said, "As soon as that bull freezes, I want fifty straws." Mm-hmm. And so I had semen here as soon as that bull froze, and honestly, that was well, that would have been in 2020 or that would have been in 2019 that that bull sold. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have used that plus one bull in every breeding cycle since then. Mm-hmm. Really looking forward to the daughters on that bull. I, we, I kept a bunch of those. Uh, pretty well tried to exclusively keep those those daughters um, in our fall, in our spring herd, and our replacements. So they snuck one out on me though in the heifer deal. So <laughs> I didn't get my uh, I didn't get them all, but I I kept most of them. But they snuck one out. Right. Yeah, and so, you do you do have some heifers uh, also on on this sale. Yep, yep. We've been selling these heifers, these open heifers. We sell um, 
we'll sell basically a lot of the heifers that just don't fit age-wise for what we do. Mm -hmm. I guess you could say that. Um, But these, I mean, a lot of these things are out of uh, the cleanup side for the most part. And they're they're just, I mean, they're they're darn good heifers. Like, I, I was thinking the other day, walking through them, like, Christmas, like this is by far the best set of heifers we've ever sold, and you know we're leading off with a darn good one. Mm-hmm. I mean, Rod eighty is she's she's special. I mean that thing is we should we should be keeping that heifer, but can't keep them all. Mm-hmm. Um, sired by that you know that McClintock bull at D sixty one oh one, cowboy cut D sixty one oh one, but um, sired by him. Out of one, out of a princess cow, um, so that same cow family is popping up again. But that heifer is, she's good. I mean, that thing is good looking, sound, big bodied, stout, just encompasses a lot of good things. Um, genetically, you know, EPD profiles pretty darn solid too. Uh, honestly, I have no idea why she's in there. <laughs> she, I just watched her video. Wow. She's she's wow. pretty good. I mean, you'd almost think when we took that video that we just pulled her off a halter and had her all fluffed up. Yep. But, nope, that's just her coming straight out. I mean, we clean them all. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna right. I'm not gonna lie about that. I mean, they all run through a shoot, they get blown out, but there's no there was no uh, washing, nothing like that. I mean, wow. she didn't. I mean, she just came straight out of the pen like that. I mean, she is. Yeah, I mean that's. That's just her. I mean, she is, honestly, I think if a showman wanted to grab her and throw a halter on her and maybe show her a little bit, wouldn't, I mean, I, I wouldn't say she couldn't do it. Right. Um, but, yeah, that thing is really nice. I mean, I I like that heifer a bunch. Mm-hmm. Um, she was the first heifer we videoed. She came in, I hadn't, honestly, I hadn't seen what we were selling yet until we ran them through the video pen. I'd seen the heifers, obviously, mm-hmm. but I didn't know exactly what they had sorted off. And uh, she hit the video pen. And I was like, "Holy crap! What are we doing here?" <laughs> and uh, yeah, video so, of the features. I guess. And uh, <laughs> the future donors. That's right. I, what the thought that the thought crossed my mind when she came in is like, oh, "Shoot, did we forget to sort one off?" Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, no, that heifer is really good. Um, really, really good. Um, that thing, she'll she'll make somebody very happy. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, you know, going back in that cow family, that princess deal. I mean, she that's in there. That five fifty one cows back in there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so cow family's there. But, and there's a lot of good. I mean, there's a lot of good heifers in this set. I mean, she's not the. I mean. She's, th- I mean, she's really good, but there is a, I mean, there is a bunch of good heifers after that. Um, you know, I think some registered guys could be interested in some of them, but it's a good set. Um, really pleased with the heifer group we have this year. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there's not as many. Um, we don't have as many heifers. Honestly, we just didn't have a whole bunch of them. Mm-hmm. Honestly, we just didn't have a whole bunch of spring calves anyway. But, um, but yeah, so. You get to dive in right into the heart of the herd, essentially, because, I mean, the cow families behind these heifers are I mean, they're the same as the cow families that the bulls are out of. Right. Right. So. That's what you like. We better hit one of these Angus heifers. Was it 103? Yep. 103. The, another ramp it up. Uh, out of the, out of the other, out of the other cow family, Queen. Just the no holes. I mean, that ramp it up bull, like I said on the on the bull on the fall bull, bull earlier. You know, no holes. Uh, just good cattle. Good, good foot. Good footed. Sound. Good body. Just really, they're gonna make great cows. Mm-hmm. I mean, just flat honest with you. I mean that that was kind of another heifer that came through, and I, you know, I told I wasn't here when they sorted. Uh, when they sorted heifers, but I told them, I said, I want to make sure, that, you know, we keep the plus ones. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't realize when I said keep the plus ones, they had a strict number in mind. <laughs> and uh, this ramp it up heifer ran by the gate, apparently. So mm-hmm. she uh, she got sorted into this group, but she's 
she'd fit right in with her, you know, with the he replacement heifers and, you know, the Angus cattle deal around here. I mean, they're, that's, that's the base of the Simmentals. Um, so, I mean, everything you get in the Simmentals is coming from the Angus, uh, I guess, I guess you can say in a way. And these females, they're going to do a nice job. And, you know, the cash stuff really, you know, with this 103 heifer, you know, she's a, She's a queen, but she's, you know, she's out of that cash, that Barstow cash pool. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a bunch of cash daughters, and those things are, they do, they're doing a nice job, really nice job. And so the maternal side's there on them, and uh, like I said, no holes. I mean, that, that heifer is just made really nice, and just like most of the Ramp It, up are, ramp it Ups are, mm -hmm. I mean, just built right. Good deal. Ben, I appreciate you. Uh, taking us through those and and uh, I'm sure anybody has any questions why uh, you can call those guys and uh, if, you, if you go to the catalog all their all their names phone numbers everything's right there at the beginning of the catalog uh, talk about some of these cattle again you can see them on video what pictures are, are here in the catalog uh, but everybody is videoed and uh, I've been going through the videos uh, as well and and they'll be on the uh, podcast video if you're not watching that so you could go to that and and watch these videos and, and see these pictures of these cattle uh, as ben goes through those so again we want to invite you all to uh, go to dover kansas on um, march 19th and see the sunflower genetics bull sale and uh, ben man i appreciate you taking time to to get this put together and uh get getting uh getting to know you and, and talk about some of the history of of sunflower genetics and and some of these cattle why uh it's been a pleasure of mine i know that yeah well thanks thanks for having me on i really really do appreciate really enjoyed it so uh but yeah you know if anybody's got any questions call any of us and like it says in the catalog, though, don't call dad during the sale. <laughs> right. I, saw, I noticed that. I've never seen that before, but I noticed that. Let's make sure that doesn't happen because he's just going to most likely going to wave one of us up to the block and we're going to have to grab the phone from him. So, yeah, give us a call anytime. I mean, we're, you know, if you want to come by and look, we're, you know, we're always here and um, somebody's, somebody's always around to show you around the stuff and. Um, we'll have cattle over at the sale facility here next week, and or I guess I don't know when this is coming out, but we'll we'll have stuff there a couple of days before the okay. sales. So okay. yeah, okay, yeah, and you also if you can't be there, you can bid uh, and watch on live auctions, uh, liveauctions.tv. Now, are you going to be behind all of that, or did you guys bring you guys going to bring somebody else in? I'm not. I uh, it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit. Uh, you know, sale day can be a little hectic right. at times. You know, yeah. so I actually uh, I have somebody that comes in and does it. Okay. Um, um, another tech, and she's she's very good. So, um, yeah. I mean, if you can't be here. Get on live auctions. I I fully support you being on there. Right. Uh, <laughs> you probably you know. should. <laughs> You know, I'm not. I'm not gonna sit here and badmouth the place, the the, the program. So, right. yeah, no, I, it'll. It, yeah, it's a. It's a great. So, I mean, it's a great website. It's, they. I mean, it. They do a nice job, and you know, I was very fortunate to be part of a company that you know has that much integrity and puts that much effort into uh, into making sure everybody's happy and make sure the customers happy and. Yeah, it's super easy to do. Uh, if you got questions, I think the, I believe the phone number for the tech support line is not in the catalog. Right. But uh, if you need that, you know, if you need help with that, you can call the office there, um, 682-816-4900 to get registered um, if you got problems. It's a fairly easy process, though. Right. Uh, so, yeah, but if, but if you need need help getting on there, just call that number I just said, and um, they'd be happy to help you out. But okay, well that sounds great. But yeah, if you got any, but if you got any questions on this cattle selling, call one of us. Okay. <laughs> All Not right. that no, don't call that number to ask about the cattle. Right. right. Call call us. <laughs> okay, and it's it's listed there in the catalog. So. Yep. Uh, yep. There's a on. whole there's a whole list of phone numbers in the catalog. Yeah. So. Don't. You, you can't use the excuse you can't get a hold of anybody because there's 
what is there 15 numbers or so right there to use so we try to give every we try to give enough numbers to give people options right right and you've you done know. well done so. well so ben again i appreciate it and again uh, Dover, Kansas is the place to be on March 19th. Again, 1 o'clock start, Central Standard Time. So uh, be there or or be on liveauctions.tv. Uh, again, Ben, wish you luck with, with that sale. Yep. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. So thank you very much for having me on. and really enjoyed it. So. You're very welcome. Appreciate you, appreciate you uh, uh, responding to Brandy as, as she sent that text. So. I appreciate all of that. And again, we want to thank all of you for listening to another edition of Before the Bid podcast. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Before the Bid. For more information and to learn more about upcoming podcasts and sales, visit us at beforethebid.podbeam.com or Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram pages. For information on being a guest on Before the Bid, please email us at beforethebid at gmail.com or one of our social media pages. Remember, that's before the bid at gmail.com. Happy sales to you, and we will talk to you next time on Before the Bid.